This is the grade three math practice test for T and ready. This is question number 27 on this version. This is a calculator allowed section, so you should definitely get this one correct, but some people will not get this one correct because they will not check their answer. It's a big danger. Don't give away points that are this easy to get. Be smart about it. And even if you don't have a calculator, there's still ways to get the answer if you don't remember what the fact is. The easy move is to say, look at this equation. Seven times something is 56. Well, if you know your math facts in terms of your multiplication tables, you already know the answer is eight. So, ta-da, you're done. What happens if you don't remember that? Because seven times eight is one of those really annoying ones that's easy to forget. Like, a, a lot of people who are much older than you uh, will likely miss this one on occasion just because they forget and say something else. But if it's a calculator allowed section, there's a couple ways that you can check your answer very quickly. The first is just to try different things. Like you could just, well, that's not 56. It's supposed to be 56, so I'll try something else. 7 times 8. Oh, there it is, so I'd put 8 right there. That's one way to check. Another way to check is to think, well, it is a multiplication problem, so what is the opposite operation for multiplication? Well, it's division, right? So we'll use that pairing operation there and just do 56 divided by 7. And that can give us the answer that we want. So 56 divided by 7 equals 8. And you can actually test it backwards by multiplying by 7 making sure you get back to that 56. Lots of ways to get to 8. Now, what if you don't have a calculator, you don't remember the math fact? It's all a big mess in your life, but what you do have is some time. Time is a not overly hefty commodity on these tests sometimes, and sometimes they're forever. If you finish, you have 45 minutes left, and you weren't really sure what this was, there are ways to go back and check. So, when I do seven times a number, it's seven groups of, and you can look at that two ways. Number one, you can make groups with seven in the each, or you could say seven groups. So basically, you have some choices is where I'm really going with all this. My suggestion is maybe you take seven little marks here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then you're just going to count up to 56. And just make sure you have equal ones in every group. I'm at 14 now. When I get to the end, I'll flip up and do 15, 16, 17. This is how I'm counting. I'm just not making you listen to me count. Because I don't dislike you so much that I would make you sit there and listen to me count out all this stuff. Instead, I'm going to inconvenience you by making you sit there and let me do it while I babble on about nothing. Or... Um count in my head, so sit in silence. We're at 40 now. Oh, sorry, we're at 35. Five, six. I have the same one in every group. There are seven groups. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight in each group. So there's a bunch of ways to do that. The easiest and the most beneficial to you as you move forward is to learn the multiplication facts. But if you don't have them on test day or you get nervous, there are plenty of other ways to get to that answer without having to remember it.